I didn't know what to do or say. I was just numb. I was just in disbelief. Now at 10, shooting horror in San Bernardino. Happy one suspect so far, male in black clothing. He's still firing rounds. Gunmen storm a social services center. 14 people are dead, more than a dozen others injured. They came prepared to do what they did as if they were on a mission. Two suspects later tracked down, then killed in a shootout with police. Tonight, the search for a motive, including possible ties to terrorism. Good evening, everyone. I'm Susie Sock. And I'm Jeff Vaughn. On to our top story tonight. The FBI says it is investigating today's mass shooting as a possible terror attack. Now, tonight, two suspects are dead after a violent gun battle with police. And a third person is in custody at this hour after he was seen running from that area. Now, the shooting happened this morning at the Inland Regional Center in the 1300 block of South Waterman Avenue in San Bernardino. Two suspects in an SUV, a man and a woman, were later shot to death after a police chase that ended at San Bernardino and Tippecanoe Avenues. And police also searching the neighborhood just south of that SUV location near a church and several homes. And here is the very latest at the 10 o'clock hour. 14 people are dead and 17 others are injured after they were shot inside the Inland Regional Center. CBS News says tonight the dead suspect is identified as Syed Farouk, who worked for the San Bernardino County Public Health department. Tonight, police are still searching a home in Redlands where relatives of Syed Farouk may live. We have live team coverage on the shooting, the suspects, and the victims and survivors. We begin tonight with KCAL Mines Tom Waite live in San Bernardino. Tom. And Susie, this area remains locked down tonight. The scene is just down the street. The FBI is there right now gathering evidence, and they will likely be there for hours, if not days. All of this while a normal Wednesday turns into unimaginable violence. Police swarm in with a small army after an explosion of gunfire at a social services building in San Bernardino. Paramedics rush to save the injured and dying. We have at least 20 victims. Inside, officers would find 14 people who died and many others who were injured. Survivors described a surreal scene as they didn't know if they would make it out of the complex alive. I was just numb. I was just in disbelief. I called my kids and said, if something happens to me, there's a shooting here, just be safe. There's, what else can I do? Outside, family members endured the agonizing wait for answers. He called me like around 1040, a little bit before 11, and just told me, babe, don't get scared. I love you so much. Uh, take care of Matthew. But there's a shooter here. So um, after she told me that, I just started driving over here. How are you doing right now? How are the people around you doing? The ordeal was not over, even after workers left the building. We had to come out with our hands up and be escorted across the street to the golf course and stood there for hours, hours, witnessing clothing of deceased ones in the street, um, people crying, co-workers crying. The shooters got away, but not before someone saw their SUV. Police tracked it down, and four hours later, the gunfire exploded once again. We need a Bearcat to come eastbound up to the front for some... When the shooting stopped, two suspects were dead, a man and a woman. Motive is the big unknown. I know one of the big questions that will come up repeatedly is, is this terrorism? And I am still not willing to say that we know that for sure. We are definitely making some movements that it is a possibility. We are making some adjustments to our investigation. And a source in the county tells me that this happened during some kind of training seminar with the public health department here in San Bernardino. It may have happened during a break. There was some kind of holiday theme to the training seminar, we're also told. We also have learned tonight that two of the guns used in this shooting may have been purchased legally. Reporting live in San Bernardino, Jeff and Susie, back to you. And Tom, I see that there's still a uh, San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department uh, patrol car right behind you. Is there anything else going on at the scene where yeah. you are right now? 
Well, we can hear in the distance the faint sound of choppers, and we do know that there is the possibility of one other suspect still out there on the streets tonight. So certainly they are checking every lead that they can. Uh, we did see an FBI cruiser and also uh, an RV type of heavy machinery that was brought down the street. This is uh, or Waterman and Orange Show, and Waterman is where the location uh, of the building is located. It is not accessible right now. They brought that FBI RV down to the location. It looks like it's a mobile crime lab. They can probably do a lot of testing from that crime lab, forensics, all kinds of other processing for evidence. So they will be there uh, for a very long time. I'm sure they will not have this open, certainly not for uh, tomorrow morning and maybe beyond that. Who knows? There is a lot of evidence to, to gather, and certainly that took them very long to even clear that complex. Uh, Tom, you mentioned a possible search for another suspect at this hour. We know earlier officers were going door to door in those neighborhoods surrounding those active scenes. Is that going on now or does it all appear to be aerial because you mentioned those helicopters? Right, so those, yeah, aerial searches definitely are a possibility right now. And actually, so what's very interesting about all of this is that the shooting that occurred this morning, the gunfire exploded just down the street from where we are right now. And just within a couple of miles from where we're standing is also where the final standoff occurred between those two suspects. They had four hours to leave this area to get completely clear of the San Bernardino County, possibly the city as well. They did not choose to do that for whatever reason. They stayed in this area. So that is the big question tonight. They had potential opportunity to leave. They did not. That third suspect, we don't know if they are letting that person go tonight. Uh, we do know that they had arrested or taken someone into custody. Someone was being questioned. The big question is now, is that person still in custody and what happens next? Okay.